Hi everybody, welcome and welcome back to my channel. This is Kriti and I am back with another video about life here in Denmark. This video will tell you anything and everything about the school system here in Denmark. I've already made a video about the kindergarten so do check that video because after that video a lot of people ask me about tell us about the how the school system is, what are the fees, what are the challenges. So this video will cover everything and as you know I am not the expert in this that's why today I have Rashvi with me who runs her own learning center here in Copenhagen and she's also a qualified teacher so without further I do you hit the subscribe button and Rashmi welcome to my channel thank you Kriti thank you for having me hello everyone I am Rashmi and um, I've been living in uh, Denmark in Copenhagen for almost 10 years now I'm a mother of two teenagers um, and I have this little place called learning center where we provide structured tutoring for kids of all age groups um, so this is uh, what I do. I basically help children um, educationally, trying to create a little balance with uh, creative and education and uh, putting it together in the form of uh, personalized tutoring for them here in uh, Hellerup. We are based in Hellerup. Rashmi, uh, first of all, thank you so much for your time today. <clears throat> I know like this is a long weekend and everybody has uh, planned. So thank you so much for uh, doing the interview. And I really want to start with like the biggest question, you know, the challenges that international parents can face when they are moving to Denmark with their kids. So what are the challenges according to like, you know, your experience uh, that you have lived here? Uh, what do you think? I think any change when you're moving to a new country is uh, there. I mean, there is a challenge. I'm sure it was a challenge yeah. for you. It was a challenge for me because uh, like I said, when I moved uh, almost 10 years ago, my kids were little, quite young. Um, so yes, uh, as parents, I think our biggest challenge is uh, to make everything work and everything work in the best way for our own children uh, because we as parents I feel um, are just satisfied by providing best for our kids. So yes there is certainly a challenge in um, adjusting to this new place, adjusting to the climate here um, and then finding the right education as in right school um, well, I use the word right, but honestly, there is no right and wrong. When we yeah. do it as uh, parents, we know we have this gut feeling that we are doing the right thing. Um, so just, yeah, getting getting a hold, getting a place for your, chil for your child or for your children um, in the kind of education that you have always dreamt for them is, uh, is something that I feel uh, most international parents um, uh, face a challenge with. So I would uh, I would look into that uh, first of all, um, understanding what education in Denmark has to offer, and then how how can you navigate your needs around those and uh, get the best for your child. So how do parents start to look for like? Uh, could you tell us a little bit about like different types of schools that uh, Denmark uh, you know uh, has and. Uh, how can parents get started with search, like knowing about those types of schools? Yeah, see, uh, it's actually when um, your child is ready for school, they are finishing their kindergarten years or uh, just uh, entering the school system. It is very important for you to see uh, what school system works best for you as a family, as for your child. So we have uh, we have the Danish school system, of course, because we yeah. are in Denmark. That is a local uh, schools. Uh, um, they could be both public, Folke school, and uh, private. Um, next, we move on to the international schools. Again, international schools have uh, different boards. What do I mean by board is uh, different curriculums. Uh, mm. We have uh, IGCSE, which is from the UK. Uh, we have IB, International Baccalaureate, which is uh, the US-based uh, curriculum. And then we also have EB, as an European Baccalaureate. Um, these are just uh, yeah, two. I'm like getting to know so much about the school system. Yeah, but yeah, this yeah. is just uh, yeah. the tip of the iceberg. I'm so this is like says, international school, yeah, right? Yeah. Three curriculum. Mm, there are more. There could there be more, more but yeah. I'm just uh, focusing on the most uh, prominent ones, the ones yeah. that are established here for uh, 
uh, some years now, many years now. So we are just uh, trying to focus on that. And uh, then we also have uh, bilingual schools. Bilingual. This is what I didn't know, like bilingual schools. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So bilingual schools are uh, Danish and English, but they could also have different languages. Like there is also a German bilingual school, which mm -hmm. uh, caters to German families where education is both German and Danish. Um, so, like I said, bilingual schools are basically for uh, families that are uh, having father and mother from different countries, so as in mixed families, ah, what okay. we call. So, children are more uh, comfortable uh, in um, getting education bilingual. That way, they master both the languages, like English and Danish, German and Danish, and so on. Yeah. Um, if you look into the European school in Copenhagen, uh, mm -hmm. it has three departments. It has the English department, it has uh, the Danish department, and then it has the French department. Okay, and I think that's the only school which is like international school and it like the fee, uh, like it's uh, taken care. Yes, it yeah. is an international school, but it is also a commune school. We call it a commune school yeah. uh, and we also call it an international school. So some parents feel it is the best of both worlds that you do get to have your child uh, learn in um, um, a Danish public school system but getting international education. Yeah, but when I understand, like I have to understand, uh, it's like when you said like they have English, Danish, so it's like one way all the subjects are taught in Danish and then one section no. where everything is taught in English? No, no, it's not like, again, it's bilingual, multilingual kind of a thing. Okay. So half are taught in English, half are taught in Danish, then you have a third language. So European school is special in some ways because uh, since it is a European school, the idea is to, um, you know, make children multilingual. If I'm mm. saying that correctly, I want to emphasize on the fact they want children to learn many European languages. So the idea is that you have German, you have French, and then you also have Danish because you are in Denmark. The, the school is situated in Copenhagen, right? Yeah. So um, it, the idea is to learn as many languages and then be able to have that proficiency in uh, those languages taking those subjects so it goes a long way in just saying so children start learning these language languages from um, from a younger age in the beginning of the primary years itself and talking about the international schools that we mm. were talking like different curriculum could mm. you uh, like go a little deeper into it uh, the, the three curriculum that you mentioned Rashmi this was the first that we spoke about yeah the European yeah. school I've almost uh, touched but I'm sure that is there is more information on uh, their website so if yeah. parents are interested I would recommend them to just take a look and get in touch with the school regarding IB and IGCSE those are the two prominent um, boards coming from uh, the international uh, uh, coming from US and UK uh, IB as in uh, coming from the US and uh, IGCSC is a UK based uh, curriculum. Those are not very different, I would say, but their approach towards learning is, is what is different. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a few uh, schools that have been uh, here for many years. Um, especially Rugod's International School has been here for, I think, a law, law, very long time. It's a Christian school and uh, they have uh, IGCSC as their uh, board up till the 10th grade. And um, they also have a Danish department. So again, uh, you know, I, I really feel that um, there is so much information available on their websites yeah. that I think it can be uh, confusing and overwhelming for yeah, the parents the to navigate everything at the same time, especially when you have that rush that I need a spot for my child as quick as I can. Yeah. So I um, I think it is very important that you go over uh, the materials as in the information on the websites and uh, start connecting with the school um, either by call or by email and set up a tour 
What do I mean by a tour is that international schools and uh, all bilingual schools, even the Danish schools, I think, um, uh, would invite parents to come and look at the vicinity, at where they are situated, what they do. By taking a tour, you can feel the school, you can feel how it feels to be there, uh, taking a look into the classroom, maybe their library, maybe their canteen area. So all those things would make you feel a step closer in being confident in applying for yeah. that school. You will, as a parent, I'm sure feel, um, uh, you know, something as a parent, you would feel that, yes, this is the place is right for my child. And then you could go ahead and do the admission process. But how often uh, they do this tour, like every school? Uh, it is. It depends on the school, but I know some schools do it on a weekly basis. So like every Monday or every Tuesday of the week, uh, they have the tour time set up. All you have to do is write to their admissions officer or admission per person and uh, they will give you the time and you just have to be present for the and school tour. Tours, mm. And these tours are like, uh, because I know like there are some fees when you need to get the admission uh, but the tours are for free like people the can... tours are yeah i th um, you could just go and check, take a yeah. look check it check, out yeah. yes yes um yeah but uh, understanding the school i'm sure uh, we all need to see and believe what it is right yeah. so just by talking over the phone if if you are not convinced or you want more details or you want to see where your child is going to be spending 6 7 hours of their day every day um i think it's uh, it's very important and I really recommend parents to uh, take a school tour mm -hmm. to see what works for them. So we have a range of international schools in the heart of Copenhagen, close to Hellerup. So it's just, uh, you know, for parents to understand that commuting can be a possibility. But yes, sometimes it is even very close uh, to where you are living. And sometimes I think parents choose uh, to live close to uh, an international school so that yeah. can be also be like a possibility that is also and it's always a plus but coming to the danish system again that is um, also a great way to explore the country learn the language and uh, uh, understand what denmark has to offer so local uh, schools as in folke schools um, uh, are great in that sense because um, they are very close to where you live Every family has a local uh, school which is called their district school. So your child is entitled a spot in the district school. That means the school where you are living in your own vicinity which is very close by. The moment you land in Copenhagen as soon as you have your CPR and all the paper formalities done, your child is entitled a spot in the district school. So it is also like for internationals like for moving yes. to uh, yes. coming to the district like uh, to the what I understand like area like commune. And every, yes, so yeah. commune becomes a little bit bigger. Kamun okay. is a is a bigger where you can have uh, say 50 schools, 60 schools. Yeah. District school is what I'm trying to say is on the street or around the street. Like say you are on a particular street and the school will be two or three streets away. So okay. all the people who are living around that area in those streets nearby, mm -hmm. their children will be going to that district school, which is again a part of the Kamun school. Yeah. The district school is somewhere which is very close to you. So the the and the idea is that your child doesn't have to take a train or a bus. They can just walk to go to school. So that is the comfort that uh, we get um, yeah. from Danish schools if you are uh, aiming for those uh, district schools. And um, I think the system is also wonderful because uh, uh, the, the education uh, ministry or the department here or the authorities understand that when internationals are moving here, uh, of course, their children or they themselves are not going to be speaking Danish. So yeah. the the process of starting to learn Danish education is planned in a way where the focus first is on um, learning the language. And that is called the reception class. Yeah, so they will first check uh, or they will help uh, the kid uh, to get, get familiar. With yes, to get accommodated and uh, acculturated or I must say to get, you know, just be there and be social. But again, for being social, you need the language. So the main emphasis is on 
learning the language and it could be play based it could be um, with different ideas it could be with sharing picture books or reading picture books and so on and so forth getting familiarized with the surroundings of the school so those reception classes have the focus of just helping the child be ready for classroom education once they have the language and it actually has uh, no fixed uh, limit some fast learners will pick it up in like say a couple of months yeah some children might take it a bit longer so it is very very uh, personal in that sense that uh, you can just uh, you know just pick it up with your own pace there is no push there yeah. is no uh, compulsion in that sense um, so i think it's it's a great uh, initiative uh, from uh the danish schools to help yeah. everyone feel at the same page at the yeah. same spot yeah so like what i'm understanding that if mm. you're coming from any part of the world yeah uh, and you want to have your children go to the danish school there is a support by the system yes. that you the kid can understand like how where the kid stands and they give the support mm. and then the kid can start the school uh, yes the... and i think it is uh, it is a great way to start and uh, feel comfortable with the surroundings that you are and uh, just get to accept uh the surroundings in a way yeah this is this is how it is and this is how we are going to approach yeah. our change so embracing the change is embracing, what i would yeah. uh, i would like to say because uh, i'm sure little kids uh, are very brave and uh, they are like excited but yeah. i think it's the parents that feel overwhelmed so i would like all my parents listening to feel uh, to firstly believe your child that yeah. is very important and little kids are like sponges their brains are like sponges um they would just take it quicker yeah. than you and me okay. yeah like the i yeah. think the parents are uh, thinking more with the stress but kids are like yeah. they want to they do it they would just uh, do it and uh, uh, not just in the beginning now uh, once there are families who have made up their minds probably to continue living in uh, denmark then they make the move also in between after completing 3 yeah. 4 years in international school if they feel danish education is what they are aiming for their child then the children do switch also uh in between the schools you okay. know in between the yeah. school years so that they can learn more danish because uh, um i think learning the language of the country that you are in not only for kids but also for us grown ups is yeah. is a must and that is one way where we can uh, say that yes we are trying we are trying to make this new country um as our new home new home yeah yeah and rashmi uh, like you said you know like there is support in the danish uh, school then we have international school mm. bilingual school but like a new parent you know coming to denmark like the parents who are coming are, do you have any like suggestion or your idea if they want to understand which school to uh, go for like you mentioned like you know there is a support also in the danish school and then they can also change uh, later like from yeah. danish to international international danish but in the beginning when the parents are in stress uh, what can uh, i think do? the first way would be to connect with the school authorities and the the admission officer and the admit, admission person and uh, look into the possibilities if there is space available if there is going to be a, you know a test or a little interview i don't know different schools do it in a different way and um, i must also say that uh, the waiting list in international schools seems to be quite long yeah. and busy uh, so i think it is just um, the spirit of keep on trying um, is very important um yes i would say that uh, meeting and understanding the school um, understanding the the system and uh, um when the places will open up or yeah. what is the possibility for their child to get in uh, like some schools have uh, more places uh, in the older years when you know grade 7 and 8 and so on yeah. but their primary could be super filled up because mm. we have more uh, parents uh, uh, with uh, let's say younger children coming to yeah. uh, copenhagen let's say this is just an example but uh, again i would emphasize that it is important that you connect with the school and they will be the best because uh, every school uh, the staff the personnel the administration is 
happy to help, happy to take in new parents. That yeah. is their job, right? So uh, just don't hesitate. Go take a tour, go connect with them, uh, look into the possibilities. And there are loads of international schools around. Please do not hesitate in commuting. I must also say that sometimes we feel that we want everything around us. So commuting by buses and trains uh, and public transport is very safe, safe for children yeah. here. So uh, please uh, be an open-minded parent is my suggestion so that you can try out um, a school or a curriculum that uh, you your child has experience with or trying something new yeah. then uh, just go with the flow and uh, I'm sure everyone has a spot everyone will yeah. get a spot somewhere or the other but you cannot <laughs> relax like okay maybe like as a mm. parent okay maybe a kid is going to international but maybe you'd want to make the kid go to Danish so you cannot like okay the the admission has happened now, let me relax. That never happens No, I as think parent. as parents, I think we have to be on our toes. So yeah. depending on, on the goals as a family, what you're looking into, I think, uh, yes, um, if I look at my example, I kept moving my kids from one yeah. school to the other because I, I thought uh, going um, to different schools will give them different, uh, you know, confidence of uh, being able to uh, make new friends, yeah. explore new things. So... I mean, that's just my, my example, but I'm sure there are uh, parents who feel uh, stability is a must and uh, being in the same school, being with the friends uh, that they were, uh, they started with, that could be the priority. So I think every family has um, their set of goals yeah. that they are aiming for, not just for their child, but as for the family itself. So uh, that's why I suggest go with the flow as in what you feel uh, is the right thing. It yeah. can't be what I feel is the right yeah. thing. What you as a parent feel for your child uh, is the right thing. So, yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. what I'm understanding that the support is there, like, you know, connect with the school. And I think all the information, uh, as we were talking before that, even what are the fees for the international schools, everything is available everything on the website. Everything is available and everything will be informed to you once you have a spot, once you are interested in taking a spot, once you fill in or complete the ad uh, admission process, everything will be informed to you as like as an open thing. So I think there is... Uh, there is no, uh, I don't see anything difficult uh, in this process at all. Yeah. Once they have the spot uh, for your child, I think everything will just be one thing after the other and uh, it will be just Yeah, and it's also done. like the same how is it must be like in everywhere, like coming from India, like how involved are parents like here in Denmark? Uh... Parents uh, have lots of opportunities, ways, uh, you know, parents are... Uh, participating and understanding um, how things are done in schools and yeah. how best can they uh, support their child to um, excel in whatever the aims or the goals are. Um, so I think it's it's great um, for parents to just be out there for yeah. their children, you know. Um, so that is uh, one great opportunity that I yeah. feel. Yeah. Like in Denmark, I see like we have work-life balance and you really see that, you know, like uh, like how kids can be in school till whatever time and then one of the parents they will if they both are working they will leave the job and they will pick up the kids so yeah uh, schools also provide after school uh, care programs or after yeah. school uh, you know uh, SFO they call in uh, uh, Danish um, so that is uh, after the school has gotten over like 2 to 33 yeah. and then till the parent comes and picks which is around 5 or 4.30 okay. so the child can be in the school vicinity uh, doing some games sports or something creative and uh, um, you know so yeah. it is very very comfortable uh, for working parents in that sense that uh, they know that their child is safe and their child is happy because he he or she is with your child is with friends yeah. um, so it's great and once the child gets a little bit older I think they have a free till center that is where the children yeah. go parents enroll them to those uh, free till centers where they have a different set of activities uh, planned for them so I think once you are in the system mm -hmm. uh, you get to know a lot of things and there are a lot of possibilities like 
as you're saying like after school activities are there then they keep planning something with the parents a lot of things are like yes it's a yeah. it's a busy year actually yeah. a school year for your child is busy and it is also busy for you if you want to be participating in you know things uh-huh. around so i think it's uh, it's great to be there to be out there and be uh, yeah open for new things open for encouragement for your child to learn new things they could also sign up uh, for activities like children can sign up for activities outside the schools like swimming class badminton mm-hmm. uh, ballet there are lots of different uh, you know programs that are uh, uh, run both privately and publicly so i think uh, the possibilities are great rashmi so tell us a little bit about your learning center like uh, what do you do and how busy you are you know with uh, the work uh, that you uh, get to do with the learning center I think um my work is uh, it basically starts after the school ends if I'm very honest about it so children come to us uh, here um to work with us uh, both one on one and in small groups uh where we just help them with uh, math and um uh english sometimes if they are new learners with english uh english as a second language um so we do that but uh, like i said initially when we uh, opened up the conversation we i work a- across uh, age groups from primary to the high school so yeah. math goes on till uh, older high kids school. okay uh, yeah yeah so and uh, we look into all curriculums uh, all the three that i have mentioned from the international like ib eb and uh, the igcsc um so basically then it is uh, it is weekdays evening or uh, weekends um that i work yeah um i am uh, yeah there are parents who would want their children to be working uh, with us or getting better at whatever uh, math uh, or english that they are uh, aiming for so i do have children coming over to me on a saturday morning Uh, or saturday afternoon to just work in this environment yeah. here which and is I, uh, I i used hmm. to think that okay the kids they don't study here over the weekend you know <laughs> but like no but i think the times are changing yeah. and i think um, um as internationals i think we have also come and uh, contributed uh to this change which yeah. i feel is uh, is is wonderful not because i work on the weekends but i think it is uh, it is important i always encourage my parents to uh try and give a constructive start to your yeah. child even if it is a weekend once you have that one two hours of uh, learning that's great and then you have the rest of the whole yeah, weekend yeah it's not like full day yeah no, no, just no. one have, hour and yeah, yeah. yeah then you yeah. have a uh, rest of the whole weekend to arrange play dates go on excursions or trips so uh, little by little goes a long way and i believe yeah. that so no i will um, agree because mm. the mom you should understand maths very early in life <laughs> otherwise it becomes so difficult yeah no i mean not just math i think yeah. whatever um, you i also have sometimes families who have uh, an intention to move into um, let's say another country with a more rigorous education system yeah. so then also uh, they approach and uh, get in touch with us uh, at the learning center so we can help and guide them in the sense as in what is upcoming for the child in that new country and we help them uh, you know bridge across that gap yeah. if there is any from here to there in terms of uh, purely in terms of curriculum and education i must uh, add that so um it is great i mean uh, i'm happy to work with the children that come i'm happy to connect with the international parents and uh, all the information honestly that i have shared or i have been able to share today with you partly yes it is my my own experience yeah. because i came with younger kids and now my kids have grown up the 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 process is still going on it's just that i'm now striving for different things and different uh, you know goals for them yeah. but the information that i have is what i'm able to share is also uh, because of the parents that i connect with due to yeah. my work uh, and um, a big uh, you know support comes from them when they feel comfortable in sharing those things with me and together yeah. we can suggest them and uh, help them with ideas i will never say that i can give solutions yeah, because yeah. that is not what i am in power to yeah, that but, is, yes, yeah, but yes but yes giving suggestions giving ideas giving a approaches as in this worked for me why don't you go
go try it for yourself yeah. is the way is the approach that I I I always follow and um, it works and sometimes it doesn't sometimes uh, uh, something better works for them so I think it is it is important that uh, we as international community here in Copenhagen in Denmark uh, we have come here we have come here with an open mind of being here so yeah. um, I would make I would try to make each and every day count yeah by doing whatever works best for me for yeah. my child my family or the surroundings yeah. that I'm in yeah so it is it is again being open minded and uh, that open mindedness is is very very helpful yeah i would always like i would always add like you have to be open minded you know mm. like coming to a new country things are going to be new so you, you have mm. to keep that uh, you know open minded and try things and get to know like how things works in this country yes yes rashmi tell us like how can people connect with you like the new parents if they want to you know enroll their kids uh, with the uh, with your uh, learning center and there is an upcoming event in september which i have covered last year but that one is so important and you will be there so yes. could you tell us uh, in brief uh, about th- those things yes regarding my connection i will just uh, send or leave my uh, details with you so you yeah. can help uh, families get in touch with us um the event that you just mentioned is uh, the biggest international uh, event conducted by the copenhagen kommun and uh, this year i think um, if i'm not mistaken it is uh, happening on the 22nd and the 23rd of september yeah. uh, i would recommend all international families whether you are new whether you have lived here for some years to just um, be out there to uh enjoy that day learn something new or uh, just support the new families that are uh, coming uh new uh, to Copenhagen this year or last year or who have come last year so uh i would be having a booth uh and uh, probably a possibility of a little presentation that is what i have been doing for the last uh three four years with uh, with them and i hope i will uh, be able to or i will get the opportunity also this year uh those things get finalized only in august yeah. or later so i will be happy to share the time of my presentation and uh, my booth number with you later yeah. on then i can uh, i can share it with the, the presentation yeah. is again uh, about schooling in in copenhagen because that is what i also do there so the information that we have shared today um is a part of or in in many ways similar to what i uh, yeah. share there on a on a bigger platform on a much bigger uh, open space and then you can you are more than welcome to visit us and if you have anything uh, as an in person one on one that you would uh, uh like to yeah ask or know my uh suggestion or anything i mean in that sense or even if you just want to come and say hi yeah. that would be amazing um so yes uh, i would leave my booth number with kriti and uh yeah. Maybe. That's how we mm. met because our, mm. our, our husbands they are friends but we didn't know about each other and uh, I'm yeah, like I think International time. Citizens Day yeah. is uh, it's should a must. be given the credit yes yeah, yes Yeah it's a must uh, <laughs> thing uh, Rashmi thank you so much for your time and uh, I hope uh, and I know actually the interview will help all the international parents coming to uh, denmark and if you have any questions put it in the comment and mm. don't forget about the september event i'm going to put all the le- details uh, on my youtube channel rashmi would you just want to say last thing please subscribe to kriti's channel <laughs> and then we end the interview <laughs> please do so please subscribe to her channel yeah. i think she's doing a good job and um, bringing our voices to you i think it's uh, it's going to be creating a difference for yeah. everyone yeah thank you so much uh, rashmi and uh, yeah see you next friday bye bye thank you bye